Welcome to Ableton Tips. In this video, you're going to find 10 techniques for making techno tracks in the style of drum code. Your today's tutor is Johannes Menzel. He's a techno producer from Germany. Before we get started, if you like what we are doing on this channel, consider subscribing and make sure to check out the incredible sample pack Johannes is using in the video, which is called Peak Time Techno. And if you would like to learn techno production in depth, check out the Techno Masterclass where Johannes shows you his full process from the first kick up to a fully mastered techno track. All of the links you will find below the video in the description. Alright, so let's get started. Tip number one, kick and drum bull. The most important element of a techno track is the kick drum. In this case, Johannes is using a sample from the pack and uses subtle processing. He's also manually adding rumble elements for additional groovy feel. The kick itself is uh, directly from the from the sample pack. It's it's just a loop. I like to add a little bit of my personal touch to to samples, but anyhow, it's it's not a crime just to use those samples because they are nice. The kick drums are amazing. So in the end, it's just a bit louder. It's it's uh, three BPM faster because all the samples are in 127 BPM. Then what I really like to do is is add some some rhythm to the low end. I use most of the time the same kick drum and uh, just put it in uh, a simpler and then play like the double kick, which which sounds like this. Um, the the trick is here, yeah, to shift. The notes a little bit this one is directly on on the grid uh, this one is a little bit off grid so you can create kind of a, a rhythm a, a, a little bit more groovy low end and it feels a little bit faster sometimes when you move the the sample or the the timing of the note which is in the end uh, where the sample starts and it's also uh, face cancellation it can happen that that it sounds different or or, or better or worse when you when you sh uh, move a, the note a tiny bit and uh, yeah Tip number two, pressing into key. Johannes is using a tom loop as one of the rumble elements. To make it fit the key of the track, he is boosting specific frequencies with an equalizer. On this one, okay, we have an LFO tool to make space for the kick drum, a little bit of overdrive just to thicken up the sound in the in the lower part of the sample and the yet yeah, the lower frequencies and we have the pro q yeah where i did a little bit of crazy um, what i did here is like i pressed it into the key with uh because the track is in g minor and uh, i was not completely sure about the tom loop if if it is if it fits key wise so i just yeah boosted a little bit the g to uh, press the sound into the scale of the track Tip number three, Soothe 2. To remove resonant frequencies from the ride, Johannes is using the plugin Soothe. It also automatically adjusts in parts where the pitch of the ride is automated. I mean, the ride has a lot of, how to say, resonances in there, which he could have EQ'd out, but, but I usually do it using Soothe. Soothe is amazing in doing this kind of stuff. I will, I will show you. You could also do this with an EQ and let, just take down the resonance frequencies. But for example, when you automate the pitch, you don't want to automate all your your EQing curves in the in the EQ. So Soothe is doing perfect work on that because everything works automatically. Because you could, for example, just shift the frequency in here. Tip number four, percussion layers. Drum code style tracks include a lot of percussion layers. Johannes used a shaker loop, a rim shot and a clap. He strategically places these elements in parts of the track. I really like the, the shaker loops from the Premium Volume 5. They're like from real shakers. We have one here in the studio. Let me, let me show you. Yeah, and they sound super, super natural. They have a nice groove. So we have more like, uh, yeah, rim shot from, yeah, a very old sample pack from PML DP Volume 1, just to 
yeah, make the track a little bit more interesting, not like just have the standard off hi-hat and, and the 16th hi-hat also have a little bit more rhythmic going on, like, like in this part here. nothing crazy i'm really a fan of choosing the right samples instead of using a lot of time for tweaking them and then we have yeah the, the clap sound which you can hear here so these are the percussions tip number five the omega transformer on the percussion group johannes is using a plugin called the omega transformer to reduce the top end harshness and add warmth what is super interesting here is this is a trick i've learned from Weska the guy who made the samples, he's using Omega N to wash out uh, the or the harshness of the, the hi-hats and, and all the stuff. You can use it on everything almost and it just sounds better and, and more full and, and warmer when you when you put it on the chain. But I, what I have learned is you really need to mix into it. When I put it on the chain after I've made the percussion group i don't like it because it changes the sound too much in a way i i don't want it to have but when i put it directly on a chain i can really develop the sound into the the plugin and i can shape the sound as i wanted to have and when i then switch it off it's it's crazy how thin the sound sounds Tip number six, the main synth. The main synth melody consists of two layers of silence. The first one uses an LFO to give it a bit of wobble. The second sound is much more stable and is automated a bit differently, which makes the timbre of the melody much more evolving. Now let's jump into uh, the synths, so which are in, in pink in my tracks usually. We have this crying, whining sound, which is a standard razor bell pad from silence but i've tweaked it a lot it is the volume automation of the sound itself which is a random yeah shape and a free rate and it's just yeah making the sound louder and quieter just very randomly in the ver with a very high rate and this is what it makes like this yeah how, how it sounds Yeah, and to make it a little bit more like uh, strange, there is the pitch automation, which is just a, a tiny bit, but I really like it when it sounds like this, when it's a little bit like, like we have an old vinyl, which is not cycling in the, in the same speed and it goes like, you know what I mean, I think. Anyhow, this is the main sound. Then we have the LFO tool just to make it a little bit pumping to work with the track. And uh, we have automation on the cutoff, the basic stuff. And coming to the next sound, which is the same. When I opened the the preset, they were combined in one silence, but I really wanted to have it separate to be able to automate the cutoff, for example, different. Doesn't look really different, but it is different yeah especially here in the track when we come out of the out of the drop i wanted to have first the original sound from the beginning of the track very open and then adding the the second one just a tiny bit later where all the percussions come back Tip number seven, the ARP. Johannes uses the Ableton Arpeggiator in the Convert setting to create a melodic ARP for the break. And then we have the main ARP, which is an ARP I use, let's say, in 90% of my tracks. It's a really nice arpeggiator sound using arpeggiator from Ableton. I really love how it sounds. And then let's just play a little bit. Tip number eight, bass. In the break, the ARP melody is supported by a huge bass sound with quite elaborate processing with saturators. Johannes also shows the technique of using a limiter on the bass. And uh, to support it a little bit and make it a little bit more epic, we have a really strong bass sound here coming from 
ARP multisaw. Standard presets from silence. And I just switched off the ARP. I copied this this sound from from a different track. I use it very often. The trick is here that it's just just a super steep and 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 warm saw bass which is filtered and and yeah saturated a lot. And then we have LFO tool, yeah, of course to pump a little bit. Yeah, then we have auto filter for doing filter automation. I'm not automating the filter on the silent here. A black box which is also another saturator. I really like how it changes the sound, makes it a little bit more fat. And what I also have here, which is super interesting, I've learned this from Dead Mouse because what you want to have, or what at least I want to have in my in my let's call it fat bass sound, is that every note has has the same volume. The easiest way to achieve it is to drive it into a limiter like crazy, and the limiter is doing all the work, and it, it's all the time limited. Yeah, so it's just like a block. This is what you want to avoid when you when you master the whole track, but especially when it comes to this kind of supporting low end in a break where you really want to have the subwoofer like shaking, then this is for me, it's a nice trick to use. Tip number nine, master volume automation. In the mastering process, Johannes manually adds dynamics in the track by reducing the volume of the break, which results in a great impact of the drop. I'm doing a lot of volume automation on the track here in, in the break because I really had a feeling that the arpeggiator and the bass and everything is compared to the impact of the kick drum here on the drop a way too loud i mean so 60 b is a lot yeah what i've what i've done here is putting it just linear down just like i had the feeling i compared i really switched in here listen pressed space switched here pressed space 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 until i had the feeling okay now it's not too quiet in the break but uh, the impact on the drop is, is still there so let me show you So in my opinion, it's just super important to have this here to make the drop hitting as hard as you can. You, you don't want to have the whole break louder as the rest of the drop or, or the same volume. I see a lot of masterings where they really crunch out the shit out of the track and the break looks also like a sausage. And I think it's, it's not a good idea because in the end you are losing really the hit of the first initial kick drum hit of the yeah, drop. Tip number 10, the mastering chain. Johannes fully shows his master processing, which consists of an outboard effect, EQ, compressor and automatic equalizer, soothe as well as isotope ozone. The last in the row is the master chain. So we have our external audio effect, which is outboard gear and it is equal queuing, saturating a little bit and compressing. What it is doing, it, it is adding low end because the pull tag naturally does this kind of stuff. Even when you just use it, you can also use the UAD pull tag. Just put it in, it's louder and it has more low end. You need to keep that in mind when you compare. Um, this is one of the reasons why I use an EQ to compensate and pull down the low end after my analog stuff. Yeah, just to, to cut out the bass a tiny bit. And then we have Iron, which is a really nice compressor. You can also use as a hardware device, like outboard gear, but it's super expensive. It's like five to six K euro. And yeah, I, I use it on all of my tracks in the master chain, just a tiny bit of compression as a master compressor, which means slow attack, fast release time and less than one dB of compression. Yeah, input gain is compensated a little bit. So let me show you that one.
I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it adds a tiny bit of, of low end warmth to the sound and then compresses a little bit more together. It's it's just something which is in my standard master chain and it's nice. Then we have Gullforce just to yeah make the track a little bit more clean, uh, just a tiny bit, 14, 16% on Gullforce. <laughs> So to speed up a little bit, I have a beat Gulfos and Sooth because they're not doing really the same, but the result is when you use them together is is this is, is nice. Every sound is a little bit closer to each other. It's just smoothening the the overall track. Yeah, then we have Ozone, nothing special, but the equalizer is doing a lot in this case because when I checked the track with tonal balance control i found out that i have a big gap in here like the 2k's and and a little bit of muffling here in the in the low mids and i decided to eq it a little bit yeah let's just switch the master chain on and off so you can hear the difference i think we have like 5 to 6 db to compensate let's check <laughs> I think in this case you can hear the difference. I mean, uh, the track without the master change sounds sounds super bad, honestly. I mean, I could go one step back and and develop my mix, but I think in the end it, it doesn't sound bad, so I'm gonna leave it like this. Thank you guys very much for watching till the end. Make sure to check out the incredible sample pack Johannes is using, which is called Peak Time Techno. And if you'd like to learn even more of techno production, make sure to check out the Techno Masterclass from Johannes, where he goes in depth into all of his techniques. All links you will find in the video description. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like and write us a comment and see you in the next tutorials. Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sound packs. If you want to cut years of your learning curve, check the PML Beginner to Advanced Music Production program for Ableton Live. You will know Ableton inside out and learn how to write, produce, mix and master complete tracks. You learn step by step at your own speed, from an empty file to professional production as if we're sitting side by side in the studio. Thank you for listening.